Digital product passports, or just to make it simple, we'll call them DPPs. They've been an area of interest for IOTA for a while now, going back to 2022-ish. That's when we first started seeing them mentioned by the IOTA Foundation. And it was centered around their work with the EBSI, which is the European Blockchain Services Infrastructure. And that was an EU funded project that lasted for about two years, I think. And it has now transformed into something else. I can't quite remember what it was, but I'm not sure how involved IOTA is at the moment. However, what is important to know is that throughout those two and a half, three years, maybe three and a half years now, IOTA has done a whole bunch of work into DPPs and sort of investigating how they can be applied at a governmental or industrial level and in sort of use cases that would require a lot of products to be traced. And that's fundamentally what DPPs are, a verifiable on-chain record that stores and shares key information about a product. We're talking about, you know, where it was manufactured, the materials that were used in its manufacture, and you can even break that down further. So if it was materials that say it's a t-shirt, for example, a Nike t-shirt, yeah, sure, you can verify that it came from an official Nike manufacturing plant, but you can probably go on further and take a look at the materials and say, okay, it's 30% polyester and 70% cotton. And then you can start tracing back, well, which country was the cotton made in? And then go even further and say, okay, well, what farm did it come from? And are these trusted farmers? So that's the kind of thing that you can use DPPs for. And on a recent IOTA X post, we saw that they have now got an IOTA product demo for DPPs. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. We're just going to run through and see what DPPs mean and have a look at how they can be used in action. Now, by virtue of just having the technology out there and available, it doesn't automatically translate to success, to adoption. There still has to be a lot of work to bring on the use cases, etc. However, what we can glean from this is that there is a framework that is readily available to be, I'm hoping, I'm guessing, plug and played into a number of different use cases where people don't have to build a DPP solution from scratch because the framework already exists as open source tooling from the IOTA Foundation. So that's the positive there. There's already something that's ready to go. All you need now are the use cases to come on chain and the professionals to help make that transition from probably a system that doesn't already exist to one that's functioning and working on IOTA's layer one. So let's go ahead and start the product demo. I'll just read through what's in the slides and then follow through the example that they've got, which is a, a live example where you actually plug in a wallet to play around with. So we see the current problem that DPPs are looking to fix is that data is kept in silos. So the manufacturer has got no obligation to share the data of manufacturing with the buyer, for example. And this can create gaps in trust even from the endpoint customer who purchases the product from the buyer, they might want to know, you know, how is this manufactured? Let's say it's an electronics device. We've recently seen in airplanes where you've got portable batteries bursting into flames mid-flight. So, you know, you want to say, can I bring this rechargeable battery on a flight without it exploding in my pants? All right, next slide. So this is where DPP step in and they're used to track a product throughout its entire life cycle from the point of design to ultimately when it's retired and needs to be recycled. And the way it does this is by linking the product to a unique product ID that is stored on chain, where it's specifications, repair and material data, compliance info, all that stuff is kept on chain permanently forever. Oh gosh, the compliance. <laughs> Can you imagine being a manufacturer and now needing to provide all that information? That would be a pain in the butt. Uh, but this is what's going to be required by the EU. So I guess it's nice to see that IOTA's got a solution that's ready to go. But bringing it back to what I said before, it's going to require a whole bunch of onboarding activity if IOTA is going to be used in that kind of solution moving forward. Well, broader, broader based solution, I should say. So here we're seeing the key players in the DPP ecosystem, or maybe in other words, in the life cycle of a product. So the product would start its life off with the manufacturer actually being built, at which point it is bought by a distributor and sold to customers or consumers, we should say, who then if they need repairs would take it to a service provider. Let's say you've got an Apple product and it starts to malfunction somehow. Let's say you've got a couple of AirPods 
and one of them doesn't charge, you take it to your service provider, they provide the repair, and if they can't repair it, they replace it and then send the faulty AirPods off to be recycled. And this is where DPPs can step in and be really useful, where they just track the product every step of the way, including what happens at the repair side, how long the consumer had it for, who they bought it from, uh, when the distributor received it from the manufacturer, all of that information, all that traceability stuff is great, especially now that we're in a world of cheap knockoffs. All right, next slide. And DPPs also solve the data sharing problem. So the very first thing we spoke about was data being kept in silos where the manufacturer is under no obligation to share the data about the device, where it was manufactured, how it was manufactured, who manufactured it. Well, the bad news for them is that now the EU is regulating so that they must provide a standard minimum set of data when it comes to a product. And I wonder if the rest of the world will do that or if once again, the EU will be first to regulate, stifle innovation and just slow things down for that whole region. I don't know, we'll see. I can't imagine Chinese manufacturing would be too excited about tracking every single piece of data uh, that is part of their manufacturing process. They manufacture hard and fast and I doubt that they would want to sort of slow that down by having to deal with regulators and making sure that the data is compliant with the European Commission. I don't know, it'll be an interesting thing to see play out at a political level uh, as well as a manufacturing level. And I guess this slide is just saying, hey, look, IOTA's got a solution and it should be used as a trusted digital backbone. And that's something that every IOTA holder uh, would be hoping for. So it's just a matter of the practical aspect playing out to see if uh, the people who are involved in these activities can make it happen. And here is the engine behind the DPP solutions where you've got the IOTA Trust Framework, which is IOTA Identity, Notarization, Tokenization, Hierarchies and Gas Station, all providing tooling that builders can use when they're looking at creating and deploying a DPP solution on chain. In other words, they don't have to build a whole bunch of stuff from the ground up because here they've got a bunch of open source tools that they can use for free. Okay, let's move on. Your mission in this demo. All right, we're gonna step into the role of a service provider in the ecosystem. And our job here is to perform and document a maintenance event. In this demo, I will scan a product review its history, perform diagnostics, and then receive lifecycle credits automatically in my wallet. Now, do I have to be on the test network for this? I'm sure we'll soon find out, so let's click next. All right, I've already got the IOTA browser wallet installed, so let's go ahead and click next. All right, let's start the tour, and let's engage in it as a service technician. All right, the product, interesting choice, is an e-bike battery and we will track it throughout this demo. And the DPP for this fictional product was created by the fictional company Ecobike. And every service event will link back specifically to this battery. And this battery has got a unique on-chain identity. All right, so let's go ahead and click next. And here we're presented with a bunch of details, which is the product's metadata. And this data includes key battery details and its bill of materials, which is what it's made of. But coming back to the battery's unique identifier, that's the DPP ID that we can see highlighted. The 0x address is its personal unique identifying trait. And this value will live on chain forever and it will be unchangeable. Let's click next. And now we see IOTA identity kicking in, where a decentralized identifier, a DID, is applied to the Ecobike brand. So this manufacturer has got an official validated identity on chain. And interestingly, here's how it works. It's domain linked, meaning that the digital identity we see on chain with DID is linked to Ecobike's official website domain, proving that the identity truly does belong to Ecobike. So that's really interesting. And it would speed up onboarding and validating a manufacturer's identity simply by somehow connecting the manufacturer's website directly to the DID on chain. So I'm thinking something like maybe Nike, Nike.com being linked to Nike as a manufacturer with that relationship somehow being validated on the IOTA network using the IOTA identity framework. All right, next. And here is where IOTA hierarchies kicks in. In this example, we could say, all right, Ecobike can nominate a list of repairers and recyclers where people can either take their Ecobikes to get fixed, or if it's at the end of its life, they can take it to a recycler and maybe get a credit. 
So that's an interesting thing there where Ecobike can say, okay, we're only gonna issue you credits if you take it to a recycler A, B or C. If you take it to a different recycler, then we're not gonna send you any credits at all. And that can all be done through an automated process as well, now that I think about it. It's a very interesting use case. All right, let's keep going forward. And yeah, here's kind of what I was just talking about in the last slide. There is a reward pool, for example, where Ecobike can sort of set up a circular economy where they incentivize actors to participate by pre-funding a pool of funds that when anybody in the ecosystem performs an action and it is verified on chain, they automatically receive some credits from that pool. So what we're saying here is that smart contracts can be used to automatically pay out a reward anytime an action that merits a reward is performed verified and documented on chain. So for repair documents that they have replaced a battery on an e-bike, they are rewarded automatically by e-bike through a smart contract with some credits. Now it may not be a lot, it may be a couple of bucks every time they do it, but it's kind of like money for doing your job right. Very interesting. All right, let's move forward. And I might scroll down a little bit here on this page, all right. And this slide is pretty much just solidifying what we just spoke about, where a repairer, can get rewarded directly through tokens where the DPP action triggers a smart contract for the repairer to be paid out. And that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I wonder if you can do it at home if you're a parent and you've got children and you wanna give them chores. Every time you cut the grass and you access the lawnmower and the process is finished, you somehow log that in a DAP and then get automatically paid out your allowance or your credits. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's move on. And we'll scroll down a little bit more. So we're seeing here how granular we can get a service history, for example, that takes a health snapshot where IOTA notarization is used in this DPP process to create a tamper proof order trail that regulators, manufacturers, and maybe even future owners of a product can reference to see what was done, what condition the product was in when it was uh, repaired or, or serviced. And this would be really interesting if applied to cars, for example. You know, if you're buying a secondhand, a used car, you don't really have a great idea of what was done when it was taken in for a service, how much was paid for the service and all that kind of stuff. So having a detailed order trail for secondhand vehicles would be a really compelling use case for DPPs, I think, especially in terms of the service history part. And that could potentially tie into sort of an automated suggested retail price for the product as well. So you can say, we can see here it says 76%. The product has got a 76% health score. Okay, if uh, it had a 100% health score when you bought it for $10,000, it's now down to 76%. You could say it is now worth $7,600, for example. Maybe something along those lines. Yeah, so that would be interesting, wouldn't it? All right, let's move on. Scroll down a little bit more. All right, cool. That's all the data that we've sort of spoken through in terms of the battery relating to this eco bike. And we've seen how all the open source IOTA trust framework tools can be applied. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next steps here. And I'm gonna connect my wallet now. This is where I'm wondering if it's gonna be on the test net or if it's on the main net. So I'm gonna click connect. I've got my IOTA wallet. Okay, we're now connected to the IOTA testnet with some test tokens. And the role that we've got here is as a technician. So in order to start updating information for this DPP relating to the EcoBike battery, I need to request network access. So let's go ahead and make that request. Okay, we're requesting service access. Can I change it? Okay, there's manufacturer and technician. We've got a pick list there. We can't manually enter our role. We have to select either service technician or manufacturer. It's already selected a service technician and I'm gonna click submit. Okay, we've been approved and now we can access diagnostic tools. So let's go ahead as the technician and start a diagnostic now to perform an annual health snapshot. So let's imagine the best case scenario is that the hardware is automatically tied into the DPP, where after the hardware gathers the data and performs the check, only the relevant data is sent back through and recorded into the DPP. Our solution automates it, and all we've got to do at this point is say, okay, let's save that as a snapshot. 
the health snapshot is now saved to the service history. So let's scroll down a little bit and we can see here, yep, that's the one that we just took with 76%. And what's interesting here, we're being told that IOTA gas station was used to pay for the gas fees in this transaction. So I, as the service technician, didn't have to pay any IOTAs to get that done. So I, as the service technician, didn't have to pay any IOTA for gas to record my service here on the blockchain. And just like that, my contribution to this product has been recorded forever. Very interesting. And this information will be available to all future owners of the product. And I wonder, I wonder if it would be publicly available as well. I don't know, maybe not without a portal and maybe to access the portal, you need to have some sort of subscription service with e-bike. It would be interesting to find out. All right, let's click next. And now we're being told congratulations because this verified service action has triggered an automated reward payout from e-bikes reward pool. Remember we spoke about that before guys, where in order to incentivize people to perform these actions on chain, you can reward them with something and here we're gonna see that happen in real time. Let's go ahead and open up the wallet. Ah, oh, cool. We can see we've got one IOTA LLC token in our wallet. And we're being told that this token can be redeemed through an Extended Producer Responsibility Organization, an EPRO, and exchanged for real world value. So that's a really cool example of something that can be done. Yeah, let's finish up. So that was an interesting demo. We saw how the IOTA Trust framework can be applied to DPPs in different scenarios. For example, IOTA identity was used to verify that the manufacturer was in fact official by linking their official website, their official domain to IOTA identity on chain. As the service technician, we became certified through IOTA hierarchies by requesting access to eBikes on chain network. We also performed a diagnostic and uploaded that information to the DPP using IOTA notarization. We imagined that the hardware would automatically feed back through the data, the relevant data to the DPP and that would be done using the IOTA notarization framework. And when we performed our action, we received that IOTA LLC token and that was provided to us using the IOTA tokenization framework. We didn't pay any fees when we performed the action as the service technician because those were covered by IOTA gas station. We're assuming that e-bike preloaded IOTA gas station to pay the gas for all of their service technicians and anybody else in the, in the product life cycle there. And to get all that done, we connected securely via a browser wallet. All right, let's go forward and finish this off. And while this demo used the DPP as its example, the principles and components we just explored are not tied to one sector. So that's, yeah, sure, you can apply it at an industrial level, but you could also apply it at a social or a local level as well. I don't know, there are so many different ecosystems nowadays and so many crypto projects that there's gonna to have to be local as well as broad adoption to really achieve that sort of idea of mainstream adoption. I really do feel like it'll be a mix of both. Like, you know, Nike is using this for product traceability, but there will also be just at the local level in a community, maybe with a product that everybody has got a hand in helping to produce. That would be cool to see as well. And maybe the, maybe it's funded by government. So government could say, all right, yep, this is a valuable product for our country or for this region, and we'll help support the local farmers to produce whatever it is. All right, and that's it for now. So that's a that's a cool demo. It shows how the IOTA trust framework can be used and incorporated into the DPP. And the DPP that I've seen most actively spoken about is Orobo. And I think one of their main focuses right now is on EV battery recycling, which will likely be a huge point of interest because I remember battery recycling is something that the EBSI was keenly interested in getting done. So yeah, the adoption stuff, it is rewarding work, but it's long-term, long horizon. And as always, I encourage you guys to do your own research, have some strategies, have some plans, and always do what's best for you. So anyway, until next time, take care of yourselves and bye for now.